Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at graphs of reciprocal functions, specifically for the parent functions of f of x equals 1 over x and f of x equals 1 over x squared. Before we look at transformations, let's just review what these parent functions look like. So first, uh, we know that each of these two functions has a vertical asymptote at 0, because if we took this denominator and set it equal to 0, or said, wait, x can't be 0, that factor of x is not going to cancel, so that would be considered a vertical asymptote. So both have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Now when we draw a vertical asymptote, we usually make it a dashed line to indicate that this isn't really part of the graph, it's just saying the graph is going to get closer and closer and closer to this at some point. So we can do that for both. Okay, and the next thing we want to identify is where the horizontal asymptote is. For these types of functions, what we're looking at is g of x equals our coefficient over x minus h plus k. And x minus h is going to tell us our vertical asymptote. So every vertical asymptote for these reciprocal functions will be given by the equation x minus h equals 0, and then you would want to isolate x. Every For each reciprocal graph, each horizontal asymptote will be given by y equals, oops, sorry, they are not all given by that, they're going to be given by y equals k. In this case, for the parent functions, there's nothing being added to these terms, which we would say, because it's adding, that it would be 0. So the horizontal asymptotes for both of these is y equals 0. And again, we're going to do a dashed line. Now, for horizontal asymptotes, graphs can cross over them. That is allowed. Um, we won't see that with reciprocal functions, though. When we get into regular rational functions, we'll see it, but here we won't. And then from here, it's good to plot three points to the left of the vertical asymptote and three points to the right of the vertical asymptote. Usually for the 1 over x function, we'll see the graph in quadrants 3 and 1 around the two asymptotes, the x uh, vertical asymptote and horizontal, and for uh, the 1 over x squared, we usually see it in quadrants 1 and 2. Now if a is negative, then that's all going to change and it's going to be the exact opposite of what I just said. But for now, the parent function, so the three points I'm going to use are negative 2 and negative 1 half, negative 1, negative 1, and 1, negative 1 half. No, oh, sorry, let's try that again. Negative 2, negative 1 half, there we go. Negative 1, negative 1 and negative one-half, negative two. I just said quadrant three, so there it is. It hugs both, ax, uh, both asymptotes. It's never going to touch those asymptotes, and it's a nice curved uh, shape. And then in quadrant one, we would have one-half, two, one, one, and two, one-half. And again, we want to do a nice curve. That was pretty good. For the one over x squared, what we're looking at is negative two, positive a quarter, negative 1, positive 1, and 1 half, positive 4. And then it would be symmetric about that vertical asymptote. So the shape is pretty similar, except when we have the even exponent in the denominator, we notice that the two lines are on the same side, so they're both above the horizontal asymptote. And when we have an odd, one is on one side, one is below and one is above. Okay, so that's what our parent functions look like. Let's look at some examples. Looking at our pieces of the graph are going the same direction, that indicates to us that we're looking at the reciprocal of 1 over x squared. So we're looking at g of x equals a over x minus h quantity squared plus k. And the first thing we're going to do is identify where the asymptotes are. So it looks like there's going to be one here. That would be our vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. And it looks like the horizontal asymptote is right here at y equals negative 3. While it looks like the graph is hitting negative 3, it's probably just ever so slightly above it. Because remember, we're squaring things, so they're getting, um, it's, it's reaching its goal quicker, but it's never actually going to reach the goal. So unfortunately for this graph, it's never going to reach y equals negative 3, no matter how close it gets. Now we can plug these into our function. So we can say g of x equals a over, and then down here it's going to be, we're going to plug in negative 1 for h. So x minus negative 1 will be x plus 1 squared, and then plus negative 3 would be minus 3. The next thing we need to check for is whether there's a value for a that's something other than 1. So we're going to find any point on the graph 
maybe this one would be a good one to use, negative 2, negative 2. And we're going to plug in to see what we get for a. We plug in the first negative 2 for x, and we plug in the second negative 2 for g of x. So this would give us negative 2 equals a over negative 2 plus 1 quantity squared minus 3. And we're going to clean this up. I'm going to add 3 to the side. That would give us a over negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, but negative 1 squared is 1 minus 3 plus 3. Those will cancel. And then we get 1 equals a over 1 which indicates to us that a equals 1. So the final equation for this, we could say, is g of x equals 1 over x plus 1 quantity squared minus 3. In our next example, it looks like we're given a graph of the reciprocal of 1 over x. So let's try to figure out, here's our vertical asymptote. And I noticed this time that the two pieces of the graph are in like quadrants 2 and 4. That indicates to us that a is negative. Okay, so this is x equals 0. And this here is y equals 3. So our parent function, or the setup for this function, is going to be a over x minus h plus k. So we can go ahead and set this up except for the a. That would be a over just x because x minus 0 is just x and then plus 3. Now we're going to find a nice point to use. This one looks good right here. That would be the point 1, 2 and we're going to plug 1 in for x and 2 in for g of x. So we will get 2 equals a over 1 plus 3. We're going to subtract 3 from both sides. We get negative 1 equals a divided by 1 which is a. So yes it's true a is negative as I suspected. Now we can write our final equation for this graph, g of x equals, we can put the negative in front, you can put it in the numerator, it doesn't matter, negative 1 over x plus 3. Our next example, we want to sketch a graph of g of x, so, okay, we're given our, par our parent function here is going to be g, uh, f of x equals 1 over x, the reciprocal of a linear, and what we might want to do is first identify the asymptote. So this one's going to have a vertical asymptote. Remember, that's going to be found by setting the denominator equal to 0, which would just be x equals 0. And our horizontal asymptote is whatever's being added to the reciprocal piece. So it's going to be y equals 1. So I'm going to start with these and just put these on my graph. And y equals 1 is right here. And now what's going to be helpful is to make a table of values around 0. So we're going to use 6 points. We're going to do 3 on the left, so my suggestion would be negative 2, negative 1, negative 1 half. And then on the right, I would suggest a half, 1, and 2. So if we plug in negative 2, we would have 1 over negative 2 plus 1, which will equal 1 half. If we plug in negative 1, we would get 1 over negative 1 is negative 1, plus 1 is 0. And if we plug in negative a half, that would be 1 over negative 1 over 2 plus 1. This ends up equaling negative 2, and negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So there's the three points on the left. Let's graph those, and then we'll plug in the remaining three points. Negative 2, 1 half is going to be just below that asymptote. Negative 1, 0, and negative 1 half, negative 1 will be right here. So it looks about right for the shape of this graph. And then we'll just draw it, we'll hug the asymptotes as we draw. Okay, looking at to the right of the vertical asymptote, if we plug in a half, I'm going to do that over here, we would have 1 over 1 half, 1 divided by a half is 2, and then it would be 2 plus 1, which is 3. When we plug in 1, 1 over 1 is 1, plus 1 is 2. And when we plug in 2, that would be I think when I write down here it looks really weird in the video, so hopefully it's not. 1 half plus 1, which is 1 and a half, or 3 halves, or 1.5. So a half, 3, 1, 2, 2, 1 and a half would be right there. And we see the nice curve form. Okay, our last example, we're going to sketch a graph of this g of x, where we have 1 over x minus 4 quantity squared. So we know the parent function here is f of x equals 1 over x squared. And so based on this, we want to identify, so remember that looks like this, where they go the same direction. To find the vertical asymptote, we're going to, we don't need to worry about the square. We're going to take this piece, 
because when we square zero, we're gonna end up with zero anyway. And our vertical asymptote is gonna be built based on this and it's gonna be x equals four. So our vertical asymptote is at x equals four, not 40, just four. And our horizontal asymptote, that's determined by whatever's being added to the reciprocal piece. There is nothing being added. We represent that with zero. So we'd say y equals zero. So we can draw our two asymptotes. And now we want to pick three points to the left and three points to the right. Uh, to the left, I would choose two, three, and three and a half. And then to the right, I would choose four and a half, five, and six. And these should end up being the same. So six and two should have the same output. Three and five should have the same output. Three and a half and four and a half should have the same output. So let's see what we end up getting. If we plug in 2, I'm running out of space, so I'm going to do it over here. Um, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. So we end up with a fourth. When I plug in 3, so that's here, that would be 1 over 3 minus 4 is negative 1, but negative 1 squared is 1, so we end up with 1. And when I plug in 3 and a half, 3 and a half minus 4 is negative a half. Negative a half squared is 1 fourth. 1 over 1 fourth is equal to 4. And so let's graph these before we get started with the other half. So 2, 1 quarter, 3, 1, 3 and a half, 4. And it should be above uh, the other graph. The other side should be above as well. Okay, when I plug in 4 and a half, uh, 4 and a half minus 4 is at a half, and a half squared is 1 fourth. And we see it right here, 1 over 1 fourth is 4. As I mentioned, these should be the same, these should be the same, and these should be the same. Uh, if we plug in 5, 5 minus 4 is 1, 1 squared is 1, 1 divided by 1 is 1. And lastly, 6, 6 minus 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4, and then we had to have 1 over 4. So it does check that the symmetry happens, which it should, so that's good. So we have 4 and a half, 4, 5, 1, and 6, 1 quarter. Why did my point disappear? Sad day. And we just draw a nice smooth curve. And there's the graph of G of X.